Hi, I'm Kevin Conquat, and this is Faker News. I am wearing this mask because of the pandemic. The ICCCCD said we should. Here on Faker News, we figured out how to disperse the virus by using this blower. This way, I can take my mask off. Watch this. Whoa, whoa, I'm losing control. Whoa. Sorry about that. We had a technical issue. Now, on to the news. On Staten Island, a warehouse owned by the man with two plastic legs was on fire today. The fire department saved the building, but the owner melted to the ground. In other news, there was a mortar main break on the south side of Staten Island. It caused a flood. One of the butcher shops got flooded. The reporter on the scene asked the owner what he did with the meat. He said he put the steaks on the top shelf and said the steaks couldn't be any higher. Now, on to the weather with our meteorologist, Miranda Panda. Hi, this is your meteorologist, Miranda Panda, and today's weather is going to be freezing due to global warming. <laughs> if you would like to check right behind me over here, you can see that the temperature is going to be negative 253 degrees. That's right, guys. We're going to get a snowstorm tonight, and by tomorrow morning, there's going to be 193 inches of snowfall on the ground. That's enough to make 100 snowmen right in your backyard. <laughs> So get your shovels ready, but please remember, after you make your snowman, don't play with his snowballs. <laughs> Back to you, Kevin. Thanks, Miranda. That's cool. Good advice. Now, on to the sports with our sports reporter, Tom Padovano. Hello, this is Tom Padovano, the Italian sportscaster. Yes, well, Tommaso Brady wins the Super Bowl again. Yes, and when he celebrated, he threw the Vincenzo Lombardi trophy from his boat to another. The only thing I throw out at my age is my back. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Also, it's about time for baseball to start again. My favorite part is when they put down the foul line. It looks like white clam sauce. Take me out to linguine. Take me out to pasta. Buy me some peanuts, no cracker jack. Give me spaghetti sauce, I'll never come back. Thanks, Tom. Back to the news. There was a hit and run accident on the Staten Island Expressway. Some witnesses said they saw the accident. They said a cement mixer truck drove off. But when I asked the police, they said there was no concrete evidence. That's it for us. Coming up next is the Staten Island Comedy Virtual Show. I'm Kevin Kumquat. I'll see you on the next Faker News, where the news is only sometimes real. Kasha, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Staten Island Comedy Show. We're going to have a great show for you tonight, so stay tuned. It's a virtual show. We have comedians to perform their stand-up sets on location, and you will see them right here on the Staten Island Comedy Show. Also, we're going to review a book called Impress Yourself with the author, Victoria Onstein, right after our first comedian, who is George Saltz. He's from Westchester, 
and the last 45 years now lives in New Jersey. He has been doing comedy for seven years, since he was 80. Wow. What made him get into comedy was he always had a passion for it. And after he retired as a psychologist, he followed his passion. You can find him on Facebook, George Saltz, on his website, georgesaltz.com. Our next comedian of the show, George Saltz, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, now, a little bit about me. Uh, when I was younger, uh, in high school, uh, I spent all my afternoons uh, after school in my room, not the way you're thinking. Uh, it, uh, I would spend it uh, writing parodies of certain songs, popular songs of the day, and I would convert it into uh, you know, some Jewish, Yiddish uh, uh, parody. So there was one song, I'm just gonna be a quick example. Uh, it was called Down by the Riverside, you may know it. And uh, I put a Jewish spin on it and it sounded like this. I used to, what the hell is this? Down by the matzah bride, I'm sure I saw a fly. When down the matzah bride, I said, so you dismiss. What's with the matzah bride? What's with my matzah bride? And she said, hey, patience, little man, I only have to hint. I do the best, but I'm able. You know, to fake is no big sin. What's more, you just came in. Besides, I don't work your table. <laughs> Very good taste. And um, I had about five or six of them, and uh, songs like that. And it was good enough to get hired professionally to work in the Catskills. I had some jokes, impressions. And uh, it was a new career. 18 years old, I was going to the Catskills. I was going to be a professional comic. A beginning of a new life. I was all excited. Uh, everything to look forward to. And the next day, I got fired. <laughs> I had stage fright. And uh, this is true. And, uh, but I wouldn't let it get me down. I said, someday, uh, I will return to the stage, I will perform, and I will get paid. And uh, I kept my word. And uh, I did that. And uh, the next time I did that was June 1st of last year. Wow. And, uh, one month before my 80th birthday. Uh, 62 years in between gigs. <laughs> the people at the unemployment said it's about freaking time. I had parties in the streets, everything. Uh, but anyway, I was into stand up comedy uh, 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 at my age, which proves the adage every old Jew has a little ham in him. And uh, I take a lot of ribbing, as you can imagine it, from friends, family. Uh, one friend. Uh, said, maybe I'll come see you sometime because um, my new girlfriend likes old Jews. <laughs> and I said, um, well, I know an old Jew that likes new girlfriends. And he almost came one time. I thought he was going to come. Ten minutes before the show. True. Uh, he texted me and said, um, uh, we won't be there because she would rather I make passionate love to her than she look at an old comic. And I texted her back and I said, she's probably right, there's a lot more laughs there. <laughs> <laughs> these, these are true. Uh, and, uh, you know, most of the young comics are so much younger than me. Uh, 50 years younger, sometimes 60. And I try to blend. <laughs> and uh, so I hang out with them, you know, uh, after the show we go for drinks. Yeah. And uh, some of them are a bad influence on me. <laughs> the other day one of them handed me a joint. And force a habit, I rub Ben Gay on it. <laughs> I felt better. <laughs> Uh, but I'll tell you the truth, I really cannot relate to the young comics, uh, their material, the guys. All they want to do is talk about their penis. Have you noticed this? Everything the penis. 
my penis this, my penis that, oh my penis. <laughs> you know what's inscribed on mine? Best if used before 1995. <laughs> I've never had a thing about shelf life of kosher products. <laughs> It only has that saying on good days. Most of the days it just says, best hit. <laughs> but, you know, I could tell stories. I could tell stories when I was younger. I was once told I was a sexual superman. And I remember the exact words. She looked at me and said, my God, you're faster than a speeding bullet. <laughs> simmer inside and then I got so pissed I got up from the bed threw the money in her face and I <laughs> thanks George that was awesome our next segment we're going to interview the author of the book impress yourself Victoria Onstein Victoria grew up in Brooklyn and is a mother of three children she is a health coach and has been has helped numerous people all for charity. She is a stand-up comedian and produces shows in New York City and Hawaii. She wrote this book during the pandemic to help inspire others. Without further ado, our next guest, Victoria Arnstein, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, Victoria. What is the title of the book and what inspired you to write it? Hi everyone, I'm Victoria 2 C. Arnstein and I wrote the book Impress Yourself. I originally wrote this book because I wanted my children to have something that would guide them when I was gone. And I thought maybe I should just publish this and have it out there publicly and put myself out there just so it could be inspirational to somebody else and motivate you in a subtle way to move to the next level. Maybe you don't have anybody in your life that's supportive. Maybe this acts like a cheerleader to you. Um, a lot of people impress other people, which there's nothing wrong with that, but they lose themselves and they don't really impress themselves. And I go through uh, stuff that's happened to me that were rough times and how I got through it. Maybe that'll inspire you. I talk about the eight pillars of health that not a lot of people know about, which I thrive on. And whenever I'm feeling my best, that's what I go to, and it helps me in my daily practice. So if you guys are interested, please read this book. Wow, my favorite part of your book was the eight pillars of health. I read that your favorite is the eighth pillar. Can you tell us a little bit about that pillar and why is it your favorite? I would like to talk about the eight pillars of health, but only one of them right now. The one I'm talking about is laughter. That's my personal favorite. And people don't realize how much they don't use this word, this verb. People need to laugh more. It relieves stress and with all this gloom and doom out there, we really need it. And you don't realize how much you feel so good when you're laughing until you're actually laughing. So if you can't get it on a daily basis, seek it out. Maybe find a friend that you know is funny, go online and find the video or go to a movie or a play. To me, my personal favorite, I'm a stand-up comedian. I love live comedy. So I don't know what's gonna happen next. And to me, the element of surprise and shock is a really good way to laugh. So don't feel badly about laughing about things that are maybe too soon that people may make you feel badly about. It's involuntary. It's your personal, you know, feeling about laughter. And it has helped people medicinally when they're feeling down. It gives people hope. It bonds people together. There's so many reasons why we need to laugh every single day. And if you can't find it every day, try to, if not, at least in the week, get some laughter in. It is so nourishing for your soul. And I promise you, you can't feel badly when you're laughing. So I hope you get more laughter today. Who designed the cover and why the title, Impress Yourself? That cover has myself as a child and me as an adult. And it's called Impress Yourself because I really want to impart to people that don't understand how to really truly love yourself and to not get so caught up in impressing other people. 
and we overlook that a lot and a lot of people feel like there is that one person that they want to impress but it doesn't even matter about that that's okay to do but also to really learn to really impress yourself like treat yourself like a best friend like you would treat your best friend and see how it feels to feel good again and not wait for somebody else to approve of whatever it is you like or whatever it is you're doing and not to ask for permission just really give yourself that that love you know and um you don't have to love everything about yourself delusionally it's okay you don't love everybody that way either so just be realistic about the way you love yourself and see where it takes you but yeah the um the cover was actually designed a little bit by my husband because he put um my baby my younger picture that he had in his office and he thought of it so that's how it came about impress yourself in closing do you have anything else to say about the book? There's a lot of people out there that don't have a really good enough friend or family member that can help them out. And sometimes a book is great as a reminder. Maybe you already know what I'm about to tell you, but you know, there are a lot of things that are thought provoking. Like maybe you didn't think of things this way before. For instance, would you be friends with yourself? Are you impressed with yourself? Why, why not? What aren't you impressed with? Maybe work on those things. Are you okay with not being impressed with yourself? Why should people be friends with you if you're not friends with yourself? This, these are things that maybe you haven't thought about in a while because we're so used to doing things for so many people and we forget about ourselves, but we're with ourselves 24 seven. Why aren't we thinking about ourselves? Because a lot of people are indoctrinated as children. It's hardwired that you are selfish if you think about yourself, but you can't really get to the next level of anything unless you really do have some feeling for yourself. And it is in our DNA to surround a lot of things around us. So it's not, you're not crazy and it's not crazy to really love yourself. So in order to love anybody else, you really do know, how, you have to know where you are. Your foundation has to be good. So in this book, I talk about the eight pillars of health and things that made me happy things that truly made me happy and at my best. And I wanted to share that with people and maybe they just don't know about it, maybe they do, but whatever it is, it's in a book, so I hope you can read it and gift it to somebody who might need it and it can act as a guide. And I also life coach, so if you guys are interested, please let me know. Thanks, Victoria. Your book was an inspiration and a fun read. I personally got a lot out of it. Please continue to inspire others. Our next comedian is Chad Shapiro. He is from New York, based in Los Angeles. He has been doing comedy for 18 years. What made him get into comedy was he just wanted to make people laugh and was always a fan of stand-up comedy. You can find him on Twitter, Instagram, Clubhouse, TikTok, Facebook, at Chad Shapiro. His website is chadshapiro.com. Our next comedian of the show, Chad Shapiro, ladies and gentlemen. Girls, I think your hair falls out, finds a home, reproduces, and clings to stuff. Because I'm going to tell you a true story, true story. I got a clean pair of boxers from the laundry, totally clean. By the end of the day, I was getting ready for bed, and I pulled the hair out of my shorts three feet long.
heads towards the shower drain, forming that bathtub toupee thing happening. Yeah, so I go to take a shower, I'm taking a bath at the same time. Chad, very funny. Our next comedian is Christopher Crawford. He's from San Angelo, Texas. He has been doing comedy for five and a half years. What made him get into comedy was a desire to be a better public speaker, but then he stayed doing it due to it becoming a genuine passion. You can find him on Instagram, Christopher. M. Crawford, Facebook C. Crawford, website Chris Crawford's Comedy.com. Our next comedian of the show, Christopher Crawford, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody. Yes. All right, like she said, I am Chris Crawford. Let me tell you a few things about myself. I'm a veteran, I'm a teacher, and I am a husband. Now, I'm not just any kind of veteran. I'm the kind of veteran that believes that veterans should never, ever be abbreviated to the word vet. You see, the vet, vet can mean so many different things. It can mean a uh, former service member. It can mean animal doctor. It can mean core vet. It can mean a person who has a lot of experience in their profession. Now, my father, he was a vet. So was his dog. So in theory, as a vet, I can help a vet, take his vet to the vet in a vet. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you are looking at me like, how did I get this get into this contest? And I'll tell you, I was vetted. <laughs> now, I do love words. I really love the hell out of them. But as a teacher, I'll tell you that my students don't share the same fascination with the English language that I do. And it's evident because they try and spice it up or make it more interesting. They take words and truncate them or they turn them into acronyms. Or they'll make a word that used to mean this, now mean this. And I pick up on it and I go home and I practice. I tell my 15-year-old daughter, your eyebrows are on fleek. That means they look good. 
<laughs> no cap. That means I'm not lying. She <laughs> thinks that I'm OD. That means I'm overdoing it. But I don't care how she thinks because I think that she is vet. I think that she is lit, man. And lit is my favorite of the words because I'm old. I've seen the entire evolution. You see, when I was a kid, it was legitimate. And then it was legit. And then it was too legit to quit. Now the kids <laughs> say lit. For half a second, they test drove the word litty. Nobody liked that, so they went back to lit. And I'm glad they did. <laughs> <laughs> compared to litty, I think, that, compared to litty, I think that lit sounds pretty damn legit. I'd even say it's too legit to quit. Sounds legit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I do get hung up on words. But one of my favorite words out there is marriage. And I've been married for almost 11 years. Exactly so. But I've learned a thing or two in that time. Did you know that married people have different nicknames than single people? For instance, I'm not sweetie. I'm not honey. I'm not baby. I'm not bae. Now, my wife, she calls me somebody. <laughs> of course, she never says it directly to me. She'll walk into an empty room and declare, somebody should mow the lawn. Or somebody should do the dishes. Or maybe somebody should change that baby's diaper. <laughs> it's all right. I have to name for her, too. It's someone. Because if somebody's going to be doing all that, someone needs to bring her fine self over here. <laughs> someone needs to get in the shower because somebody wants to watch. <laughs> someone needs to get up on that bed because somebody wants to climb on top. Oh, man. <laughs> but somebody's going to get off way too soon. And someone, she's going to be very disappointed. Oh, man. <laughs> Always there. Now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I am Chris Crawford, veteran, teacher, husband. Thank you so much for your time. Aww. That's the end of the show. I want to thank Tom Padovano for providing some of the jokes for the cold opener and playing the part of the sportscaster on the Faker News. I also want to thank Miranda Tiffany for playing the part of the meteorologist on the Faker News skit. I want to remind you, you can see previous episodes of the Staten Island Comedy Show on my YouTube channel, Nevin Cummings Comedy. And please subscribe. Also, check out my Facebook page, Nevin Cummings Comedy, and my website, nevincummingscomedy.tv. See you on the next show. Bye.